from the news that our huge Prince of Wales uh, warship has got a bit stuck, hasn't it, off the coast of the Isle of Wight. It set sail yesterday, no, Saturday from Portsmouth, but it only seemed to manage the 13 nautical mile journey before, well, it grinds to a halt. It's not really looking very good. Meanwhile, there have been reports of uh, the RAF changing the way that they recruit people with accusations that they may be actually dodging, taking on the brightest and the best, all under the name of diversity. And then there have been shocking reports about behaviour going on in our flagship aero-acrobatic team, the Red Arrows, all about sexual assault. They've been having to have consent lessons. What is going on? with our armed forces. Well, joining me now to talk about this is former senior military intelligence officer, Philip Ingram. Philip, fantastic to have you on the program. You were actually the whistleblower with uh, the, the Red Arrows situation. Can you explain a little bit more about what that's all about? Well, I, I commented on it. Um, I had been working with um, Chief of the Air Staff for over a year, having originally highlighted the issues within the Red Arrows, but trying to keep it behind closed doors so that he could protect the reputation of the RAF and therefore the operational capability of the RAF. Um, but unfortunately, the longer investigations go on um, and why it took so long within the Air Force when in any normal company it would have been dealt with within six days or six weeks, um, we're, we're over a year into it. Um, the longer it goes on, the greater the chance of something bubbling to the surface and, and uh, exploding as it has done with all the uh, all the other issues. Um, and it's highlighting a, a failure in command uh, within the organisation to stop inappropriate behaviours um, as they begin to uh, bubble up. And that then gets worse and worse and worse. And as it's swept under the carpet more and more, the pile of detritus gets bigger uh, and eventually it just explodes everywhere. And that's exactly what's happened. I mean, let's turn our attentions now to HMS uh, Prince of Wales, which hasn't really made it very far on one of its big uh, operational missions out to do, I, I understand, some NATO exercises in the Atlantic. But it only got as far as the Isle of Wight. What's going on? Should we be concerned? Well, you know, as with the Artemis spacecraft, you know, the, the excuse the Navy, I'm sure, will come out with is it's a big, complex beast, because it is a big, complex beast. Um, and there are tolerances for things that go wrong in peacetime that uh, wouldn't even come into play if it was in conflict. Um, and from what I understand and the reporting that's out there is there's something wrong with one of the uh, the propeller shafts that's there. And these are not little beasts. You know, there are two of them on board. They're hollow shafts, bronze lined, um, uh, wrapped in um, a GRP, and they weigh about 240 tons each. And they're turning a propeller that is seven meters in diameter and weighs about 33 tons. So if you get even a little bit of vibration in one of those, um, it's best to stop, find out what the vibration is, see if you can fix it. If you can't fix it, get it back into port, because whilst you could theoretically continue on one um, shaft, then uh, you, what you don't want to do is put the ship in any further danger. That's going to be greater expense to try and repair. So exercises are all about trying to identify faults whenever they go wrong, see how you repair them. Um, and this is a training exercise. They're just doing it a little bit for real with a real fault this time. The invasion of Ukraine has certainly shone a light on things such as our defence spending and our readiness, really, to face any sort of aggression that might come our way and stand up for those who are in NATO. What do you think the condition of our armed forces is like at the moment in general? In general, our armed forces are good. You know, we are one of the few militaries that can deploy anywhere in the world. Uh, we can put a formation on the ground anywhere in the world to have an effect, whether that be a war fighting effect, a peace enforcement or a peacekeeping effect. However, we lack some key capabilities because there have been some appalling spending decisions, um, appalling decision making um, in, in the past. And, and that effect isn't as strong and powerful as it could be. And then there's not enough numbers of people to be able to do everything that um, from our, our position as a permanent member of the Security Council of the United Nations, the fifth largest economy in the world, the sorts of things that we should be doing. But the fact that we can put two aircraft carrier groups out, um, broken propeller shafts pending, um, but we can also put army formations on the ground uh, and we can fly aircraft from the Royal Air Force anywhere in the world uh, to have that military effect proves that we are doing it. Um, and we're supporting what is going on in, U in Ukraine, albeit not flying in Ukrainian territory. So you're good, but could be a lot better, I think the report would say. 
I mean, you, you bring up there, we frankly do not have enough people in our armed forces. So does it concern you, these uh, reports that have come out about the nature of RAF recruitments with allegations that they might be passing over some of the people who did better in trials and tests to get certain positions, all in the name of diversity? Yeah, one of, the, one of the problems that there is whenever you've got um, a society where there is no shortage of jobs is trying to recruit into the armed forces, especially when you start to get this sort of bad news coming out where there is you know, aggressive wokeism um, trying to um, tick boxes because people think those boxes should be ticked instead of ensuring that um, the, the right people are in there with the right training to defend our country. It, we, the, the armed forces are never going to reflect society completely. It has to be there to protect society, and we need the best people to do that. Diversity is critical within it because that broadens your, your, your thinking and the foundation for how you're building your armed forces, but it shouldn't be the driver.